Welcome to the CEN Show, a platform where we learn from the world community. I would like to introduce Professor Amin Ra, and I'm your host, Rosky Mascani. And tonight, our topic is Mo Better Blues. And we have a, a gentleman that's a podcast host. His name is Greg Lacey, and the name of his podcast is Speak My Peace. And I and I checked out the brothers, a few of his videos, and he's he's kind of doing what we're doing here. He's educating and inspiring people to be a better version of themselves. So he's basically doing what we're doing. And brother Machinda's popping in now, so that's another one of our panelists. So I just you know I want to ask you a few questions, brother brother Greg. Now, I just found out you came out of high school in 2011. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So what, what inspired you to, to uh, start doing a podcast? Because you, you, you're, fairly, you're fairly young compared to me. Matter of fact, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I teach students and, you know, I had a hundred and something back in 2011. So what inspired you to do a podcast? Man, I tell the story all the time. I just had had too much idle time. Um, so I started listening to podcasts, I want to say maybe 2007, 2018. I started like just really listening, getting into the podcast world and figuring things out. And so I was in school. So to give you back story, I, once I graduated high school, I went straight into the military. So I served in the Air Force, um, got out the Air Force and then went to school. So around 2017, 2018, I was in New York going to St. John's University. And it was just one summer, I usually just, you know, take up courses so that I can have stuff to do, I have free time. Uh, so I can take over my free time during the summer and things like that, and then to get ahead of my um, education plan. So it was summer 2018, I was on the precipice of my uh, commencement. I only had, I think, two more semesters uh, left at that point. And so I couldn't do what I had been doing the previous summers as far as like just getting the courses I need over the summer um, so it can help me because all the courses that I needed, they weren't available over the summer. So this summer, 2018, I just had a summer that I really just didn't have anything to do. I, I had too much idle time and I figured that I just needed to do something to, to fill in idle time. And I, I'm a person that's not too active on social media. I was when I was a little younger, I say uh, my late or early 20s um, in my teenage years, I was very active on social media, whether it was Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. However, around age, let's say 23, 24, I had I wasn't as active on social media. I started to pull away just because I kind of seen the landscape and where social media was going and what people was using it for. And it's just, I figured that it wasn't for me anymore. So I stopped using it. But when I stopped using it, it really just took away an avenue for me to voice my opinion on certain things, voice my dismay about certain things, or just, you know, just talk to people. So around the same time that I started realizing I had too much idle time, I was also getting heavy into podcasts. And so it just really just came to my mind, like, well, there you go. There goes your sign to, you know, voice your opinion. You know, you're not active on social media. You don't have this outlet to speak about things that are going on in the world. Now you can use, just get a microphone and, you know, pick up certain things and talk about certain things that, you know, you want to talk about and you can be in control of it. And so initially I started off the Speak On Peace podcast as just speaking about just current topics that were going on or, or around in the world while I was trying to find my footing um, with the podcast world. And then through that, I would say maybe about 50 episodes in, hand, I started to realize that, okay, I have an audience. I know what people want to listen to. And I started to speak more towards just the Black experience, the Black experience, uh, specifically in America, but the Black experience all around the world as well. As well. I wanted to be in control of the narrative of, of Black people and Black people lives who we see far too often that Black people lives are covered in media and it's not by people who have walked in our shoes. So I use my podcast as an avenue to do that. That's, that's excellent, man. Now tell me this, uh, you went to St. John's. Did you get your degree? I did in uh, communications, a bachelor's degree in communications. Oh, right up your alley, yeah. That's, that's yeah. excellent. <laughs> now tell me this, uh, how was that Air Force experience? Did it uh, awaken you to certain things or how was that? How was that experience? It did. It grew me up fast. So I was a, a paralegal. So 
going straight out of high school, being 18, 19 years old and stepping into a job as of that of being in the law and seeing, you know, people being fairly young, you know, people joining like I did join the military very young. And then you're thrusted with a bunch of responsibilities and you may make one mistake um, and that could alter or change, you know, your life. And so early on, you know, I used to play, I played basketball. So a lot of the people that I met on the base that I was stationed at, you know, I met them through playing basketball and I may be playing basketball with somebody one week. And then two weeks later, you know, I see their name across a, a paper that, you know, I'm dealing with in my office because they've been a mistake, whether it was, you know, got caught smoking weed, whether it was a DUI, maybe they got into altercation, whatever the case may be. So that caused a, a, a heavy effect on me, especially early on being that young, like, wow, you know, I'm befriending a lot of these people and meeting a lot of these people. And just as frequent as I'm meeting these people, these people are lives are changing, whether they're getting, you know, kicked out of the military, whether they've been uh, so, uh, some severe punishment, whether it's, you know, pay grade being deducted or certain things like that. That really grew me up fast as I started to realize just the consequences of, you know, your actions, you know, being mindful of the decisions that I made. So being 18, 19 years old, me seeing that, it really grew me up, um, but also made me realize that this is not something I want to do for 20 years as I expected to do. Okay. Well, that's good, good. So now, why this uh, topic, Mo Better Blues, can you get into that and then, uh, you know, go ahead and, and uh, kind of present the information about more Better Blues? Yeah. Right. Um, so I chose the topic, Mo Better Blues. I felt like it was perfect speaking about something that's dealing with uh, an incident we've been seeing going on in Memphis, um, but also just wanted to bring it back into just the forefront of us discussing, you know, certain things that happen in our community. So, you know, as we have been seeing this past couple months, um, the incident that's been going on with the star point guard of the Memphis Grizzlies, um, John Morant, with him getting caught up um, with so many different instances that, that have come to light. You know, the first time it happened, you know, he he got um, punished, um, had to sit out a couple of games and was away from a team and went to go so get to seek mental help. Um, and then, you know, come back around a month later, he's getting in trouble for a similar incident or the same incident, you want to say. And those two incidents being brandishing weapons on, you know, Instagram and, and basically just portraying a lifestyle that most people who are outside looking in saying this is a lifestyle you as a superstar point guard and you as a role model for the youth should not be trying to portray or trying to get out there. And so obviously with that, you know, a lot of people have their opinions on, you know, what he did wrong, um, the type of person he is. And I don't want to focus this discussion around that because, you know, we're all, we're all humans. All of us come through different walks of lives. We all experience life differently. Uh, you never know what the next person is going through. So I don't want to condemn him or demonize him or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, he's a young black man that's still figuring out life. But what got me to really speak about this topic for this episode was because it kind of reminded me of a, a conversation that I've been seeing going on. You know, I'm 30 years old for most of my life. And one of the main factors in the blaming him um, for his actions was the type of music he listened to. You know, one of his favorite artists is an artist that most people say is a kind of, a, a, that glorifies violence, um, to, to just for better words. And so a lot of people are saying, because he listens to this type of music, he is doing these type of things. And I've seen this conversation happen time and time again. I mean, hip hop was turning 50 years old this year. So hip hop is a fairly young genre. Um, but we've seen for the past 30 years, especially I've seen for the past 30 years, that a lot of times that when it comes to, you know, our young black men, you know, when it's when they are um, privy to listen to a certain type of music or listen to a certain type of artist, um, a lot of time the blame gets placed on the artist and type of music they listen to, which to me, I don't think is fair because I listen to the same type of music. I watch the same type of movies. I, you know, am interested within that same type of community. I don't choose to, you know, display certain actions or I don't just choose to portray a certain life. But a lot of times it's brought back to, OK, it's the hip hop music that's causing this effect on the kids. And a lot of times that may be the case. But I think it's unfair for the person who has made the mistake, but also the athlete, because, like I said, you know, a lot of I mean, also the artist, I should say, because as I said, a lot of young kids look up to the athletes and they look up to the artist. And I'm not the type of person who believes that, you know, you come from a hood or you come from an underprivileged background that, you know, the only things you can do to make it out of those situations is you play sports or you make music. But a lot of times people turn to those avenues because it seems like that's the best way to express 
the things that they have gone through while growing up. So it was a form of expression outside of whatever type of music they choose to um, listen to. And so my question for you all is, in this incident and in incident similar to this, do you all believe that this is an instance of art imitating life or life imitating art in the sense of, do we really believe that music has uh, this much of an effect on children and young adults that it caused them to portray a certain lifestyle? Or do we just believe that just by happenstance that this person is trying to portray a certain lifestyle and they also happen to listen to this type of music? I know there's no way to physically or scientifically prove, you know, the correlation in between the two, but do we feel like that is what it is or where it's just like art imitating life or life imitating art? Or do we feel like it's something deeper within our community as far as young men portraying certain lives? Okay, let me let me um show you show you and everybody else we didn't have shows on this topic and i just want to let everybody see this so they can go and check out the shows because i think they were very important so i'm scrolling down and Let me see where it's uh okay. We talked about it right here. Yeah. This particular show right here. It was uh Brother DX. This was when was the date? The date was May 3rd. May 3rd. Yeah, yeah hip hop music frequency shift and we talked about it that's one show i just want to make sure everybody you know that that see this if they haven't seen the show go back and check it out because it was very informative uh life lessons also when it comes to this topic uh we have brother kwabana he had a uh, one six months ago and that was November 23rd. Um, and he had also one more before mm -hmm. that. And here it is right here. And you know, when when we get over a hundred views, that's pretty good for us. Yeah. <laughs> since we're fairly new and, and people not aware of us, not uh, it's a lot of people aware, but you know we fairly new, just like your show. And, and I want you to also talk about that your show, and um, I can pull it up because I subscribe today. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is Ger Geronimo Pratt's nephew. He was a, a political prisoner for years, and very well known Black Panther. So his nephew. Okay. Swabana. And uh, this brother, he's very well versed in, and he's a, he's against the type of music that uh, that's derogatory and and that's influencing people to do certain things. He's he's matter of fact, he's against it. And um, and I could say that I don't advocate it. And the reason why I say it personally because I know how music affects me. Mm -hmm. and, it has a strong influence on me, and I'm a, a lover of reggae music. And the reggae music I listen to, it's called Roots Reggae, and it's uplifting, and it's talking about the Black experience, the world world experiences, popularized by Bob Marley, and his his music's very influential to this day. And uh, he, five of his sons performs. Uh, he has uh, some grandsons that's performing, granddaughters, daughters. So it, it, it's a music is very powerful, and it it does have a strong influence on you. Uh, I I heard what you said and how you listen to it and, and all of that, but you don't let it affect you in that way because evidently you have a maturity level that a lot of people other other people don't have. So. I think it's powerful and, you know, we all have our opinion about it. And then one thing that's discussed a lot 
is how the the what's promoted with the music what the what the the industries put out there for black people and how they portray us and make those people superstars versus more of a conscious type of lyrics and and uh art that's going to uplift but we have this music music that's influencing us to do things that's not good and healthy so that's my little take on it i'm gonna uh, go to uh brother machinda and then i'm gonna go to professor i rob we had somebody that came on hopefully they come back so brother machinda uh did you hear the question that he posed yeah I did. Okay. Uh, what What were you saying about art? Did you say art versus life? Tell me about that again. Uh, yeah, I was trying to. I was uh, posing a question: is do, like, do we believe that certain instances like this, and not even just this particular instance, but other instances, um, do we believe it's a case of just like life imitating art in the terms of you know people hearing music and going out to you know act a certain way because of music make them feel a certain way, or do we feel like this is something more deeper than that? Is it something mentally? Um, that, you know, young children are from these neighborhoods or from these communities that are dealing with that's causing these certain actions? Yeah, well, that's a good, good question. Um, well, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, some of both. It's kind of like all of the above, just, you know, it's like a spectrum. And I think different people fit on the, you know, the, there's a, you know, it's kind of like everybody uh, fits on the spectrum, uh, you know, it's kind of like a uh, spectrum, like number one through 10, you know, some people are 10, some people are on the one on the spectrum, meaning that, um, you know, growing up, you know, I grew up in Compton and, uh, you know, so listening to music, um, what my parents were listening to, you know, all the old albums and things like that. So I have a range of appreciation as it relates to music. And so growing up, just what was being heard in the household, uh, it had an impression on what I like and, and certain beats and tones and lyrics and, 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 and sounds and, you know, and so, um, but as I got older, as I branched out into the, started, you know, you know, going outside and, you know, you know, playing with my friends and, you know, going to school and then, of course, uh, we identify with our own music. You know, it's kind of like because I believe that the uh, radio stations, the media channels, the platforms, you know, you know, we talk about AI on these other shows and talk about algorithms and things like that. That's, um, you know, trying to reach certain audiences at certain ages, you know, the use of subliminal seduction to get uh, people attracted to whatever it is. Are we still there? Probably. Yeah. Shanda, you went out for a second. Still there? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, so I'm, I'm saying is that uh, you, 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 what, you are what you're exposed to, to a certain degree until you get old enough and become a thinker and start trying to figure it out for yourself, you know, what kind of influence that it has on you or anybody else. But, you know, I know growing up, you know, we just, you know, I mean, when I say we, we're just talking about there's sub, there's cultures and then there's subcultures. And uh, within my subculture, within my group of friends, you know, we uh, listen to similar music. And, and, and so therefore, uh, you know, it it what is it it was what it was, and uh, you know the you know the rap, the hip hop era came out, and and so forth. So of course, you know the gangster rap, you know things. Like, it just was personifying what was going on in neighborhoods, and sometimes exaggerated. Uh, you know, some of the guys that you know, talking about it and rapping about it wasn't about that life, but you know, of course. You know, we're 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 uh, entertainers, and so uh, the media companies, you know, packaged it up, and uh, of course, you know, now I do believe that the folks that run around with low self-esteem 
or some of us that are underdeveloped in our thinking, you know, we become impressionable and, you know, it could have been. Luckily, I, you know, like I say, I think I developed a healthy self-esteem to where it didn't uh, drive me into violence. Some of the things that I was listening to. Uh, but again, growing up, you know, in I grew up in the revolutionary period to where more consciousness was going on. So I was more attracted to the, the ones, the conscious brothers that were putting out conscious rap, you know, the public enemies and things like that. So what I'm saying is, but that was a, that was a, a concerted effort to, to do that. You know, that was a well thought out situation, you know? So I think, so the moral of my story is that, to your question is, I think, you know, we mimic our environment you know, and part of our environment, our culture, our subculture is music. And and um, so it just depends on who you are as an individual. I know plenty of people who grew up listening to all kinds of music. And to this day, I can listen to certain things that might be kind of crazy, but it's, it doesn't have an effect on me. You know, I'm yeah. just listening to it. I listen to 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 beats and the 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 uh, the, uh, the craftsmanship, you know, like, the, you know, the entertainment. But again, I'm, I subscribe to, like I say, all the the killing and all that kind of stuff. You know, we have too much violence going on. But, you know, you look at the video games versus the music and all those other things. You know, uh, I, I, again, we mimic what we're, um, you know, what we're exposed to. And a lot of it, and some of us take it to another level and and, and, and so forth, you know, so. I don't know. That's just a broad question, but I think it's kind of all of the all of the above, you know, it, uh, depending on who it applies to. So, but I appreciate you coming on, man, and I want to listen to more. All right, thanks, brother Machinda. You you have a response for that? Yeah, I feel like uh, just with both of y'all responses, it, it has been like an underlying theme of it, it's mainly just maturity plays a big factor into it. Um, I think it's just like. You know, you you are what you consume. Um, however, you are able to dictate, you know, who you are based off of your maturity level, based off of how you let it consume you. You know, I listen to a wide variety of music as well, and I it, and I have a specific type of music that I like. Like, I like jazz. I love jazz because I love horns. Whether it's a saxophone, whether it's a flute, wherever the case may be, I just love to hear horns. But if I'm putting on music and I just want music to play and the majority of the time I'm going to listen to rap. Now I'm a particular fan of conscious rap, but I listen to all types of rap, whether it's a, a Jay-Z to where it's a mainstream artist, whether it's a conscious rapper like Lupe Fiasco, or whether there's one of the, the younger rappers that the young kids are listening to like NBA young boy. Like I have a wide range of wide palette of music that I listen to. It doesn't affect me one way or another. You know, sometimes, you know, the beats, you know, if there's more melodic or it's more laid back, yeah, it's going to put me in a, in a calmer mode. Um, and then if I listen to something that's more upbeat, it's going to put me in a more, you know, upbeat mode, but it's not going to cause me or drive me to go on to the action uh, and commit certain actions or commit certain crimes or to, you know, act a certain way. Um, I think another thing that, you know, that was uh, brought up in his uh, response as well was also video games, which is also, I, I, I bunch it into music as well. Because I feel like when I one thing I missed out in, in posing a question to you all is the generational divide that I believe that the dismay towards that type of music or things like that caused. Because you know me growing up, you know my mom would tell me, my brother, you know you can't play certain games because I don't want it to cause a certain effect on you. You know me and my brother still snuck and played those games, but didn't have any long term effect. Like I didn't go out and live a lifestyle that I saw when I was playing GTA or I was playing Call of Duty, like I didn't want to live the lifestyle, but I enjoyed it when I played that game. And it was the same thing with music. You know, I would hear from older people uh, in my family. I would hear from, you know, sometimes my mom as well. Like, you know, what what is this music you're listening to? Turn it off. And I think when we pose questions like that, we create a generational divide because we have younger kids that are like, I like listening to this artist. I like this artist because he comes from a similar background like me. He's speaking about things that I see going on in my community. Even if I'm not involved in those things, I still see them around my community. So that's my reality. And you're telling me not to listen to this. So now I have a problem with you because you don't understand me. And so I think that he covered that in his response, but it also, you know, triggered me to really think about that as well as about as far as the, the generational divide that happens when, you know, we shun certain artists or we shun certain type of music as well. 
Okay, that's a good reply. Now, something you mentioned in there, maturity. That's that's one of the keys to all of this. And if you, if you like, I've been dealing with students for over twenty seven years. Been working with kids since nineteen eighty eight, and also dealing with a lot of parents. And so, when you talk about maturity, we have parents that still don't know how to act. And then you have what I call, I, I have a term called grown kids. You know, the, the maturity level is very important. And that comes with being, being also being educated. Evidently, you had a, and I'm, I'm just assuming this, you had a, a support system at the house that taught you some and you, and you were able to, uh, and, and I'm just going off of just listening to your conversation and hearing a few of your podcasts. You must have had a good upbringing. In my my, if I was to say, I say this brother had a good upbringing. You know, I had a good support like, system. I say that. Uh, <laughs> I said I had a good support system for sure. Well, my upbringing well, wasn't, then, wasn't that then, good, but, see, but my, my mom and my grandma for sure was a great support system. You know, I I came up with both parents in the home, and they did their best. But we got Professor Iman Ra on here. You know, I met him early in, you know, my early 20s, mid, mid to, uh, yeah, mid 20s. And he became a another person in my life that that kind of parent me. So I, I was able, I was fortunate to have people throughout my life to, to kind of keep me grounded. So I think that the key word you mentioned was maturity. How many mature people do we have that's like you, that's able to evaluate what's going on and say, oh, this is not something I shouldn't be doing in reality versus, oh, I'm going to go and do it. So it, it, it's, a, it's a heck of a thing, man. And, and, and we, we're, we're dealing with a lot, as you was talking about, the, you know, black people. We, we deal with a lot. We're, we're what we call in a war because of white supremacy racism. So very interesting. Appreciate what you're saying. So I'm, I'm uh, brother Ty. Welcome. We gonna get to you, but I'm gonna go to Professor Amin Ra first, and uh, then I'm gonna come to you, Professor Amin Ra. Again, greeting, uh, my brother. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. We yes, really brother Greg, it. yeah, brother Greg. We we uh, deeply appreciate uh, your your presentation. And, and I appreciate it, and I hope I understand it correctly. Music is the universal language of the world. And music has a profound influence in every aspect of life almost. We used to have what they call uh, love music, you know, making love. You know, some artists would claim, hey, I know I made a lot of babies, you know, through this song, you know. We had jazz, where most people just smoke weed and listen to it, and they get something out of it. It's all music, no words at all. But they love it, you know. I mean, they understand it. I never did. It wasn't a group. I don't, you know, Temptations remain. I, I never understood, even though I hung out with jazz artists. Willie Bobo. <laughs> Big Black, Group McCall. And, you know, you have reggae music, you have uh, other Caribbean music, you know, music is, is, is profound. You have uh, 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 different type of influences. Now, the violence that they accused John Moran of by waving the gun and being a bad image for the NBA. Well, they're in a violent society and, and they're playing a violent game, you know, even though they try to act like it's not violent, but you can see they don't play basketball the way we play in the park or we'd be, we'd be still fighting if somebody held us and pushed us the way they play. I mean, you know, I mean, most cats would say, I ain't playing, that's rough, rough. you don't know how to play. My point is, is that yes, there is, there is a, a, a degree of mood music that get people in different moods. We had civil rights songs, 
in the black movement. We had uh, black power songs and black liberation songs based upon our condition. But one condition that we share, no matter what aspect of music you listen to, may it be rap, may it be love songs, may it be uh, message songs like Bill Scott and the last poets, and, and they were rapping way before these young people. It was rapping consciousness. And uh, even Isaac Hayes, they used to, you know, he had a song, you know, Ike rap. Most cats from the prison rap jokes, stuff like that. Rudy Ray Moore, Richard, not Richard so much, but a lot of uh, comedians would, 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 would give long jokes and, and make them rhyme. Red Fox, all that. My point is, is that the, what what the major influence of John Moran, he may take music for theme songs to get him in the mood to exhibit his affiliations and his mindset. But it's the society that produced him. May it be a dynamic society of a number of things, Parents that may not have put enough emphasis on character and ethics and values from the family. Uh, they may have been loose. They may have been cussing around him. They may have been talking about, I'm going to shoot me somebody. You know, you got parents that really trip in front of their kids. They get high in front of their kids now. They, they, get, they get high with their kids now. Mm -hmm. So uh, young people, so, so a lot has to do with John Moran. I think music is something that gets him in the mood, but who he was hanging out with, his peers, you know, each time he was not with ball players, not with his wife and kids. He's with cats that do that. You understand? And he yeah. enjoys it. And he may be the biggest influence on them, being a multi-millionaire. And hanging out with cats that, you know, ain't no way in his class as far as economically. But he dropped into the, into the mud. And I, I don't think it's the music that made him drop. I think it's the society because there are many rich people that do the same thing he do. Ain't nobody worse than Trump. He's a billionaire. You understand? And he, uh, he, 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 had, he had the people attack the Capitol, you know, <laughs> you know and, and it's just like the early churches and their gospel singing. Ain't nothing but a gang. All you do is look at the history of them and their imposition of religion on other people. And they're fighting with people that don't believe what they believe. You understand? Yeah. Violence is America. That's what Martin Luther King said. This, this country is the biggest purveyor of violence. And, and, and most people said, arm yourself or harm yourself. In other words, sometimes people have weapons to defend themselves. When you went into the service, you went for the purposes of defending mark, democracy and defending this country. You had to swear to that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You, and they own your life. They can send you in the battle. You drop bombs on people and things of this nature. They, they didn't say, let's talk this out. They didn't sit down and say, hey, let's, you know, we don't need no violence. They can send guns to um, whoever's fighting right now. They send guns all over the world. I got gun factories here and contract. I mean, I'm not talking about private guns like ton of and people. I'm talking about this country produces. They produce weapons. They produce the atom bomb, the nuclear bomb, the cluster bomb. And then they want to know why people do what they do. They tell people in society, oh, we don't need no violence. Well, why are you over there doing it? I mean, you in Africa? You in Hades, and you ain't giving them food. 
and you ain't teaching them to develop themselves, you're in there for their resources. Raping them on their resources. And that was influenced, I mean, that, you know, nobody talking about what influenced them to do what they do. And they're the biggest purveyor. They ain't gonna act like this man did something that is a shock to the world. When Florida just said, you can carry a gun anytime, you don't even need no back job, back time. Tennessee, where he play at, Memphis, they have an open carry. Arizona has an open carry. Texas have an open carry. And they, now, now, he said he shot somebody, okay. But waving a gun, oh, Lord, why do you wave a gun? You know what I'm saying? Waving a gun? You know, come on, man. This is them. See, one thing I learned, I ask you to learn, never let the oppressor be your teacher. You understand? Listen to Malcolm. His democracy is hypocrisy. He has the victim being the perpetrator and the perpetrator being the victim. I'm just saying, man, yeah, music has an influence. And I don't mind you trying to reach young people and say, don't use that for your theme song to go out. And that. As a matter of fact, get it out your heart and mind. Uh, because, you know, you, you, most of the time you're going to do it, you're going to do it to your own people. Like we used to tell young people, if you want to sell drugs, study to be a pharmacy or a medical doctor. That's what medical doctors do, deal drugs. That's what a prescription is. You get some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my point to you, you're on the right track trying to reach young people and Thank doing you. a critique of music. And we've, and as Rasha P said, we've had some of the best guys that broke down songs and their words. I mean, you you listen to some of them podcasts, but uh, that that he had, I mean, his brother breaks the words down and show you the psychological suggestion, and then he will do things to people getting high or people with do not have the personal or support system to keep them from participating, in that. and the majority of youth don't. <clears throat> the majority of youth don't. Just like only about one or two percent of us play in the NBA. When you look at the population of black people, even if you say it's just 30 million, you understand what you're talking about? You know, a hundred people on these teams, and like we're giving 200 out of 40 million. Hmm. Out of that 40 million, there's a lot of young men that dream of going to the NBA and end up playing at the park for the rest of their life. And this brother make it. And, but he was like that before he got in the NBA. You understand? You know, I mean, it wasn't like he got rich and they said, oh, yeah, let me finance some street stuff and, and tripping. I think he got some serious issues. What he gonna lose? And what we would lose if we waved the gun, no comparison. You understand? Because the higher you are, the harder you fall. You understand? So they gon' they gon' they gon' say they ain't trying to make him in a poster boy. They always trying to use some brother to make the other brothers act right. That's what they did in slavery. They, that's why they whipped them in front of them, beat them in front of the rest of the slaves. Get them to see. So he's going to get a message to all the other brothers. You understand? We in control, and you will never be so great that we will not drop you. You understand? Because the NBA going to go on with or without him. The brothers played the game even when he wasn't, when he's hurt. The game go on. But we, as you said about music, yeah, we need to check it. When I came up, you 
dedicate a song to your to your lady. These rap songs, man, your lady say, "What's this? You want to rape me? <laughs> you want to kill my mom and my daddy because they won't let you take me out?" No, no, uh, brother, but you keep on pushing. I didn't mean to give a long narrative, but brother, I, I taught black music. You understand? Uh, at one at one year at Long Beach, one semester at Cal State Long Beach, and um, I, I participated in music, singing and and, and hanging out with the entertainers. Right there, man, it's a, it's a rough game. You know, it's a rough game. I don't care what era you're in. Musicians live a different life, man. Traveling all over the country, different venues, and they not, you know, they 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 uh they try to have fun wherever they are, <laughs> you know. And the fans, they're fanatics. And there's always somebody with some dope. There's always with somebody that want to have sex with them. It could be a woman or a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure on these ball players. You know what I'm Even when me and Rasha Key were playing, I played at Long Beach State. I played at Centennial. I played. Went for basketball. I never went to college. But there was women that come at the women that came at you hard. And uh, you know, and they knew you had somebody, and they still came. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> so, unless you have a strong constitution, the temptation. When we're young, we thought we could screw the world. You know, just line them all up. You understand? Line <laughs> <laughs> you know, every woman up. I don't care what she's fat, skinny. You know, saying Japanese, Chinese, I can get them. You understand? Until we matured. You understand? And got responsible and became family men. I had to cut a lot of partners loose. I had to and say, I ain't going to be doing stuff in front of my children. You understand? And, and he called discipline. And, and I'm hoping that this brother recruit from this. He ain't going to deserve the, what they're going to do to him. But, he, but most people are going to say he's a fool, he's crazy. But just look in your household. How many of them you got? <laughs> and the only reason he he he's what he is because he's so famous and he you know rich. So he like I said, that's what he's gonna lose. He ain't going to jail. He ain't broke no law. But he's gonna be breaking his situation into a Humpty Dumpty that fell off the wall. Wall. It's hard to put yourself back together. But anyway, keep on pushing, bro. I, I love that uh, that quote that you said about, you know, never letting your oppressor become uh, your teacher. And that's really like the baseline of what Speak My Peace podcast is, is just owning the narrative surrounding our people um, and being the people to support, not even support, but speak on certain topics that, you know, are prevalent within our community because we see a lot of time, you know, you look at the newspaper companies, you look at news uh, as far as television, um, you look at these cable companies, you look at all these broadcastings, they all tie back into, for the most part, I think it's like three or four different companies that own all of these outlets that have that control these narratives. And so when you have something like that, something so powerful, and then you see that it's no representation for us, like for the most part, for most of my life, I'm 30 years old, the most pre prevalent um, TV network has been BET. We look at it now in 2023, BET is not owned by Black people. So you have all of these outlets that are speaking on our people, speaking about what's going on in our community and pushing these narratives. They don't look like us. And so it's important for us to talk about us and speak about things that are going on within our communities, because we're the only ones who have been through whatever it is uh, X, X person has been through. That's one of the main reasons why I want to even speak about this topic and bring up this topic is because, you know, I think we can all 
realize that you know whatever it is he's going through yes music may have somewhat of an influence on, on him but it's more of the structure as you know was previously stated about you know from households you know he comes from a two-parent household however you know you can come from a two-parent household you can be in a two-parent household of two parents who may be immature or you can be in a two-parent household for two parents who don't care what you may do and that affects your life as you grow older and you have all these responsibilities that you know you have to take care of, you're the breadwinner, you're taking care of your parents, you're taking care of your siblings, you're taking care of your child. A lot of that comes back into a way on you mentally, like, wow, you know, I have to have all the responsibilities to take care of these people, but nobody is taking care of me. Nobody is caring for me. Nobody cares about mental health because I'm the breadwinner. And so those type of things cause an effect on you. You know, the question was asked, you know, for me, you know, maybe my upbringing was, was good and my upbringing wasn't good, but I had a good support system. You know, I had a mother that cared about me. I had a grandmother that cared about me. Um, I had an early relationship with my father. However, my father was incarcerated when I was six. You know, six years old is a pivotal moment in your life to lose a parent. And so that caused an effect on me. But despite all that, I still had, you know, a household with a single parent mother that I knew that, you know, I did something wrong. There's going to be some type of consequences, whether it was I was going to get my ass whooped or there's going to be something, you know, way further than that. Where maybe she called a cousin, maybe she called an uncle to get me straight. But I understood early on that the consequences of the, that I, there were consequences for my actions. So I knew that I had to walk a certain path. So to even go back into that, I do believe that that structure plays the pivotal. And I even, uh, you know, I, I bring up John Morant because he's the most um, prominent example of this. But this goes on all across the world. And I think that, you know, we lose sight of, you know, a lot of these kids, they partake in certain things because there's something missing in that household they don't have that structure they don't have that role model to tell them right from wrong they don't have someone to show them this is the path you walk you want to stay away from this because this can lead to x y and z so um i thank you for that quote because i think that that is the the baseline of what the discussion is is that you can't let your oppressor be your teacher and we see it time and time again like the majority of people who are criminalizing him and, and demeaning him is the people who don't look like him, is the people who don't come from the background that he comes from. And so it's easy to paint him as less than human being because they don't care for him. Well, they're exploiting him, but let me just say this to you. Though. You know, it's it's easy, you know, young men and young, young men like us, we do grow up in, in different situations. Brother Machinda worked with young people every day, the brother that spoke before me. There were kids that I worked in juvenile hall, I was a teacher in juvenile hall, while I was a professor in Long Beach. There are kids from middle class families that commit crime. And they asked, why did you do it? Well, what was, it, what, what was that wrong, John? Well, my home was good. My mom would buy me anything I want, but I wanted, I wanted to do it myself. That's why I robbed. And then I, they just get overwhelmed by peer pressure and things of this nature. See, there's no, it's a complicated situation. People are influenced by different things. But one thing that you've got to remember that the majority of Black people in America see themselves as American, not Black. They eat their food, they, 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 they think like them, they want what they want, want to be equal to them. And as Rasha T said, why you want to be equal to the devil? <laughs> you understand? The doers of evil. You understand? So, you know, the only thing I'm trying to tell you is that it's complicated. And, and, and it's good that we have young people like you can speak that truth to young people. Some will listen and learn. And come back and tell you, thank you, you opened my eyes. Some you'll read about, like you said, some of your friends that was in the Air Force, you read, you know, you read about them. That, that's just the way life is. There's no, you know, our own kid, me and Rasha T. Machinda, we're very fortunate that we were on top of our children. Some of them, you know, my kids couldn't go out they go around the corner. They never walked to a store by themselves. They never did none of that. I always knew where they were. And they didn't know that I was on it. If they had school, I was up there. My parents never asked me if I ever did homework. 
You understand? Because they from Louisiana, all they know how to do is work mm -hmm. and feed. Today, parents, they, some of them, most not them, you know, some of them, they, the kids have a menu of what they want to eat. When we came home, we ate what was cooked. You understand? We didn't have a hamburger on every corner, a hamburger stand or a taco stand or a pizza house. Now they deliver it to you. You understand? And the other fear, we're, we're on the brink, of, this country's on the brink, not we, this country's on the brink of nuclear war. We're on the brink of uh, artificial intelligence taking over the world. We're on the brink of in climate change. And we're just trying to change our partners and friends and young people. But that stuff affecting us, man, that's down the road. We can't even get to that. <clears throat> you know, here's a, mom, here's a brother with enough money. He should have been starting a basketball camp for little kids. And uh, our tutoring, a, a building a school like LeBron James. It's off his first year salary in our charter school, on on a physical fitness place. But no, he he out there wanting to have fun. Man, I know how many cats in the pen machine. I tell you how many cats in the jail just went for fun. You understand? They just wanted to have a good time. They thought a good time was jumping on somebody. A good time was stealing a car. Good time with Buckler Riley. And they just did it. They, they didn't even have to. I mean, I got, you know, you, it's like a cat that stole a car and got a car. You know, it's like a dude that, you know, paid to get in the movie and then sneak in. You know, it's, it's, you know what's, what's happening? You know, but you had that out there. But you want to reach whoever listened to you and whoever you can reach. And that's beautiful to, for you to mentor people through your podcast and drop consciousness on them and spit truth to them. That's excellent. Go ahead, Roger. Appreciate it, Professor Rob. We got sister making it happen here. So. <laughs> Greetings, family. How y'all doing? Good, good. Black and beautiful. That's right. That's right. Well, I missed the presentation, but it's always good to see a young brother on speaking uh, about peace. So I see that's your um, title of your name on your podcast. So I have to look at the recording to enjoy your presentation today. Um, but thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And yeah. um, Sister Making It Happen is one of our podcast hosts and, and team members. And she's, she's, uh, she she didn't grow up in Compton, but she's a Compton uh, affiliate. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> yeah, she's she's in the mix in Compton too. So yeah, so but yeah, you grew up black. That's uh, what you. <laughs> I, I grew up black, and this is what I decided to pour in and uh, help the youngsters brick by brick to build them up. Um, and so um, again, I'm excited to hear your presentation and how you're um, shedding light. Thank you. Know, you. In for a treat, this brother has over a hundred videos on YouTube and he has a, a similar podcast to ours. So doing good work, doing good work. So uh, brother Greg, uh, any last words before we get out of here? Um, never mind. I'm just grateful to to be on this platform. Like you said, you know, platform likewise to mine, but also just expand our audience and and speaking to you know bringing my audience to yours and you know bringing your audience and talking to your audience. I think that that this is great. Um, like I said, you know, the the baseline of my podcast is only the narrative. You know, speaking about issues that happen within our community that you know details that are surrounding our people. 
and us speaking about it and you know speaking about it from a from a human stance rather than dehumanizing someone because they are not the same skin color or dehumanizing somebody because they don't come from the same background from you um i think that is the importance of, of the speak my peace podcast and the reason why i'm extremely grateful to even be um, on this platform to even speak about you know the topic that we spoke about because these are the conversations that need to happen so that we can continue to control and own the narrative as it pertains to our people Excellent, excellent. I'm going to share. Uh, can am I on mute? No, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to I share. You. I'm going to share your podcast. Okay. Time is one of the most precious commodity, and you don't want to. Let me share the screen. Now, this is actually somebody else's podcast, but that's you. So let me put in here, speak. Speak, please. Oh, let me go to my subscription. I subscribed. So. Uh, okay. It's right there at the top, yeah. It's at the top? Yeah, your description is to the left of the page. Uh, oh, it's right here. Yeah, here we yeah. go. Well, here's the podcast, everybody. Uh, 107 subscribers, 238 videos. He's similar to us, and he has a, a lot. I was listening to some today. Excellent. Okay, podcast is called Speak My Peace. Yes, yeah, Speak My Peace. So if you go to YouTube and put that in, you'll pop up. Yep. But you you be uh you put it on YouTube after your show or yes. Live? Uh so I do it's not live um, so I, I release the audio on Thursdays and then YouTube videos will be up on Saturdays. So you own you 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 have your podcast on Thursday. Yes. Yep. Uh, on Spotify, SoundCloud, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever the case, wherever you listen to podcasts, it is available on there, and it's uh available first thing in the morning on Thursdays. Okay, I do mostly Zoom, but when you say podcast, how do you how do you, when you have to subscribe to get a podcast? Okay, from Apple. Uh, um, so what I use is I use a, a network like Buzzsprout that pushes it out to all the other uh, networks. So at first I was um, getting the okay from the other companies, but I had to do it one by one. Um, so I found an easier way to do that. And we're just using a, a, a platform host like Buzzsprout to where, you know, you just upload the podcast there and it feeds it out to all the major podcast um, companies. And so what's the what, what's the name of it again? Uh, Buzz Sprout, B U Z Z Sprout. It's good to know. So I, I, you know, I've been looking for for younger people, younger than me, and even uh, uh kids that's not grown to to you know come on, join on, and do a podcast. So I will definitely. Uh, keep in contact with you and hopefully we can do some collaborations and things of that nature and uh, get people to, you know, to check you out because your content is good. Really good. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate you coming on here. Brother Machinda, sister making it happen. Any last words? I'm encouraged again to see that and I'm looking forward to uh, going through and looking at some of your uh, material and uh, thank you for uh, being here this evening. Um, you know, we need you guys uh, to be that um, guard for us in this realm and I appreciate your passion that I hear and your determination to make sure that um, that our, our presence is is and our truth is there. So thank you again for taking the baton and, and, and running with it. Thank you. Brother Machenda. Yeah. How can I get one of those caps, brother? You got your merchandise going? Uh, nice soon. Cap. Coming soon. I got shirts, shirts and hats coming soon. Um, I will be sure to share that out as soon as they are available. I'm working on it. 
Excellent. We'll get, All right. we'll, uh, get we'll put you up on the website so people can uh get to your merchandise. Excellent. You. Keep up the great work, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you all for having me.